everyone. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined by a very special guest. Many of you are going to take one look. You know who he is. You've read his books. You've watched his lectures. You've listened to him. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. Klein. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. So another fan, Jagannath, asked, do you believe that the attacks on Mycenaean sites during the Bronze Age collapse was a result of possibly an inter-Mycenaean conflict, the Sea People's internal rebellions against the aristocracy, or possibly invaders from the North? All right, so this is an excellent question. Lots of possibilities. The short answer is we don't know for sure. All right, that's where, that's where we are. But having said that, I think there's um, there are possibilities that we can rank in, in order of um, most likely to least likely. I don't see any evidence for warfare between the Mycenaean kingdoms. I don't think Terence is fighting Mycenae or Pylos. There's no evidence of that. What we might have is internal rebellions, and that has been suggested in the past, that you've got the, the lower classes, for example, the 99% rising up against the 1% for whatever reason. You know, we know that there were earthquakes that hit Mycenae and probably Terrans, though that's now debated. Um, and there was drought and famine there as well. So um, I could easily see the, the have-nots rising up against the haves. So internal rebellion, definitely. Droughts and famines, definitely. We know that the populations move out of the main centers uh, and live elsewhere, beginning in the Iron Age, like 1100s onward. So uh, it may be that they were seeking out new lands and all of that. What I don't see, the one thing that we can rule out is invaders from the north. The so-called Dorian invasion, yeah, didn't happen. No yep. such thing. No, made up. Uh, I know that later historians, Thucydides and Herodotus say that. Absolutely no evidence for that. Even some of the new things like the Nahuatl sword and the fibula and all that, uh, and even uh, handmade burnished ware that was being found and identified, especially in the 70s and the 80s. None of that is evidence for an invaders. There is no evidence for new peoples at that time. What I do think, though, let's, do, let's not call it an invasion. It's not the Dorian invasion. Let's call it maybe a migration. We do know that there are peoples moving around, especially during the Dark Ages, which, by the way, are no longer so dark, but the Iron Age. Um, certainly the Dorian dialect of Greece makes its way down, as does the Ionian dialect and all that, during those centuries. But that doesn't mean it's invaders. It can just mean migration. So invaders from the north, not so much. Migrations from the north, okay, maybe, but more peaceful. It's actually exactly the same sort of thing as um, Asafio Sorlando has suggested for the Philistines in Among the Sea Peoples that um, it may have been much more peaceful than, than we are, are typically told. So I would rule out invasion from the north in Greece. I would rule out internecine uh, warfare between the city-states, but I would keep in as possibilities uh, uh, internal rebellion, problems with drought and all that. Um, I also wouldn't rule out invaders from another direction. So in a previous one of your uh, episodes, Louise Hitchcock referred to um, watching peoples coming from the sea, right? The Pylos tablets talk about watching the sea. Uh, and some people have thought that this is the coming of the sea peoples, which is possible. I would not rule out at all that the sea peoples, whoever they might've been, did overrun Greece. And if that's the case, I think some of the people that they overran subsequently joined them. So uh, in, and, in and among the Sea Peoples, which are nine different groups, uh, as you've talked about with previous uh, people, you've got in, um, in one of the invasions in 1207 under Merneptah, and in the other invasion in 1177 under Ramses III, you've got one group called the Equesh, who could be uh, Homer's Achaeans, and you've got another group, the Danaans or Denian, or the Danuna or the Denian, which could be Homer's Danaan. So you've got one group in 1207, which could be Mycenaeans. You've got another group 30 years later in 1177, which could also be the Mycenaeans. 
So I do think as frequently happens when um, you have in history uh, an invading force, some of the people they've defeated then join them. And that may have been the case. In fact, I'm thinking you could probably explain a number of the different groups of sea peoples as having been people they overran in Anatolia, Cyprus, Canaan, wherever, that then joined on to them. So long answer for your question, but uh, I think there are a variety of things that could have happened to Mycenaean Greece, but that we can rank them in order of um, most likely to least likely. Growing up, I'd always read about this Dorian invasion, you know, especially out of old history books. Actually, Ryan Stitt of the History of Ancient Greece podcast was the one without him knowing, because I hadn't told him yet, don't want to let him know I'm giving him too much credit until the episode comes out. He, uh, he actually touched on that in an episode, and up until that time, I had truly never known that there was anything different. And so the more that I researched that I found out like, wow, a giant portion of, you know, what I had read as a kid basically didn't happen. And so that's what, uh, that's really fascinating. And I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of my subscribers have asked questions about the Doran invasion because they just didn't know. Still very prevalent all over the internet. You know, you can still see that. And even in some history books. So, so the, after the sequel, the after 1177, I think I'm actually going to start with the Dorian invasion and, get it out of the way right away and then oh, yeah. get into so if that didn't happen what did happen and go from there so yeah yeah ladies and gentlemen don't forget to check out the links in the video description below where you can also acquire digging up armageddon the search for the lost city of solomon by none other than dr eric klein it is a fantastic book that takes you through not just the history of megiddo but the history of those who brought it to our understanding, who guided us through it, who excavated it, the hardships and drama that they endured, and the fascinating stories of the men and women who shaped archaeology of their day. It comes in a book format. You can get it on Kindle, but also what is absolutely fantastic is if you get and download the audiobook, you get to listen to Dr. Eric Klein himself take you through his awesome work and I can't recommend it enough.